Hi all students, welcome to the solution of FMG CBT. This is Dr. Ashutosh Agarwal, your pediatrics faculty. I tried to cover maximum questions which are covering the topics which are asked in the foreign medical graduate examination. So starting with the first question, a question on the Apgar score. We all know that in first question we take in a newborn at one minute after birth assessment of Apgar score was done. So you should remember one thing that Apgar score assessment is not done at birth. The first it is done at one minute after birth. There is heart rate of 80 per minute which is just by the stethoscope. Right. So basically Apgar score is a score which tells you about three systems in a newborn regarding the CVS, regarding the respiratory system and regarding the CNS. And the CVS part is which you judge by the heart rate, which you judge by the heart rate. So if the heart rate is absent, you give a score of zero. If there is heart rate which is less than 100 per minute, you give a score of 1. And if it is the heart rate more than 100 per minute, you give a score of 2. So in this, what the thing to be remembered? Apgar score will judge you regarding the three systems, CVS, respiratory system and the CNS. One thing, it is to be taken at 1 minute after birth. And if this is regarding the heart rate. So in this question, the heart rate is being given as 80 per minute, right? It is being given 80 per minute. So if it is being given 80 per minute, this the Apgar score regarding the heart rate will be just one. That will be one. Three, it is never there, right? The max minimum can be zero of any component, each component, and maximum can be two. Moving on to the next one, in a term child. Parents refused for injection vitamin K at birth. Yet of course, the parents might think my child get injured. I don't want to give injection vitamin K at birth. There is increased incidence of following in this child. Now, you are being given a term child, right? In a term child, the vitamin K was not given. Now, why the vitamin K is being given? Because vitamin K decreases the incidence of hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. And the question which has already been repeated in your FMG exam, which is the most vitamin which is deficient in the breast milk. The most vitamin which is deficient in the breast milk is the vitamin K. Right. So what we give is, it is a practice of giving an injection vitamin K to every child at birth. We are giving injection vitamin K to every child at birth. And in a term child, the dose will be 1 milligram at birth. Erythroblastosis fetalis, that is something you call it as hemolytic disease of the newborn. You call it as hemolytic disease of the newborn and that is particularly because of the ABO incompatibility or RH incompatibility. Right? This is nothing to do with vitamin K. DIC particularly, although in DIC the clotting factors is consumed but DIC cannot be prevented by giving injection vitamin K at birth. And NEC, most common risk factor is a preterm child. And it has nothing to do with the deficiency of the clotting factors. Right? So, simple question, simple answer, hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Yes. Moving on to the third one. After the child is born, first thing is to maintain the temperature. Always remember, in a newborn, if you are going for first thing, the first thing you always need to do is to maintain the temperature. Which of the following prevents the heat loss in the newborn resulting from evaporation? Now, how can a newborn lose the heat? The heat loss can be by the four things. The heat loss can be by the evaporation. The heat loss can be by the conduction. Heat loss can be by the convection. And the heat loss can be by the radiation. So, these are the four mechanisms by which there can be heat loss in a newborn. Now, why you are placing the child under radiant warmer? Because you want to decrease the heat loss by radiation. Over the insulated mattress, child is coming in contact with something, right? That is, you want to decrease the heat loss by conduction. Why you are drying the child? You are drying the child because you want to decrease the heat loss by evaporation. Why you are closing the doors? 
because you don't want air currents to come from outside and you want to reduce the heat loss by convection right so one by one you need to remember thing and the simple we have asked you here which of the following will decrease the heat loss because from evaporation the answer will be simple drying the child so we dry the child at birth because you want to decrease the heat loss by the evaporation is moving on to the next one acute rheumatic fever and bacterial endocarditis both can present by which of the following manifestation right a simple thing right a subcutaneous nodule that is a feature of rheumatic fever this is a feature of rheumatic fever rhythma marginatum is again the feature of rheumatic fever and they both are the major jones criteria so they can be seen only in the rheumatic fever we say here petechiae mainly are seen in the bacterial endocarditis bacterial endocarditis so out of the four if you want to just think of a single feature which can be common between the two that is the congestive heart failure so congestive heart failure can be the presentation of acute rheumatic fever also and it can be the presentation of the bacterial endocarditis also moving on to the next one out of the following most common congenital obstructive lesion of the left side of the heart is so what you basically think is left side obstructive lesion now if you look at the choices being given coarctation of aorta again it involves the left side and it is a obstructive one hypoplastic left heart syndrome left heart of left portion of the heart has not developed mitral stenosis obstructive lesion aortic stenosis obstructive lesion and what they are asking is the congenital and out of them if you talk of congenital the most common is the coarctation of iota the most common is the coarctation of iota so this coarctation of iota is the most common congenital obstructive lesion which involves the left side mitral stenosis is mostly acquired and the most common cause in india is rheumatic fever same applies to aortic stenosis also they can be congenital but very rare mostly they are acquired and they both are because of the rheumatic fever and the coarctation of iota is something which we say is the congenital right moving on to the question number 6 out of the following intrauterine infection which of the following is acquired through the birth canal so if you talk of the torch infection this is particularly the torch choice is being given so these are the intrauterine infection which can be transmitted from the mother to the child this is the intrauterine infection which can be transmitted from the mother to the child so they can be transmitted antepartum they can be transmitted intrapartum or postpartum so antepartum means they can be transmitted in any part of the any time of the pregnancy intrapartum they are transmitted at the time of delivery and it is the postpartum they are transferred after delivery right so if you see toxoplasma toxoplasma mainly has got a antepartum transmission rubella mainly has got the antepartum intrapartum is herpes simplex virus 2 and cytomegalovirus is something which can be transmitted antepartum intrapartum as well as the postpartum so if the mother is having genital lesions in the tract and that is of because of herpes so when the child will come in contact with the lesions there will be the transmission so what we basically go for is here we basically go for the cesarean section instead of going for normal delivery we go for the cesarean section is moving on to the next one meningococcal polysaccharide vaccine is not recommended in the following the simple thing what you need to remember is all polysaccharide vaccines all polysaccharide vaccines may be meningococcal may be typhoid may be pneumococcal all polysaccharide vaccines are not given below 2 years of age they are not given below 2 years of 
each right so that is a concept we have given the choices so if you say not recommended yes it is not recommended here if you are planning splenectomy in this splenectomy always there is a risk of the encapsulated organism there is a risk of the encapsulated organism right so encapsulated includes hemoplus influenzae meningococcal pneumococcal so that is recommended child is having late complement factor deficiency in the late complement factor uh, late complement factor deficiency there is increased incidence of neisseria infection so that is true child being sent to hot hostel at times yes. now if you choose between 1 and d yes of course a child is going to a hostel that should be given the vaccine because meningococcal spreads in the closed communities right so out of the four if we choose the answer correct here is children under 2 years of age because all polysaccharide vaccines are not given under 2 years of age all of the following features are associated with a child having down syndrome except now aplasia cutis this cutis aplasia or aplasia cutis that is the ectodermal scalp defect this basically is the ectodermal scalp defect in the scalp there are certain portions where hairs are absent and this is a characteristic feature of trisomy 13 that is the patau syndrome so this is not seen in the down syndrome this is seen in the patau syndrome there is increased risk of acute lymphoblastic leukemia in children yes in infancy there is increased risk of m7 type of aml aml right then trisomy 21 is due to maternal non disjunction yes as the mother age increases as the mother age increases chances of non disjunction increases as the mother age increases chances of non disjunction increases so this leads to the trisomy there will be blush field spots in the iris that is true and there will be upward slant of the palpebral fissure there will be upward slant of palpebral fissure and this upward slant of palpebral fissure is given the name as the mongolian slant this upward slant of the palpebral fissure is given the name as the mongolian slant is right so this is all the features which is seen in a child having the down syndrome is 12 year child on routine examination 12 year child on routine examination in school has 1 plus proteinuria or basically 1 plus proteinuria there is no edema no hypertension no hematuria so moment you say there is no hematuria this rules out iga nephropathy iga nephropathy right now minimal change disease will present with the nephrotic syndrome that is true clear and the fsg will also present with the nephrotic syndrome and minimal change disease the age group is basically 2 to 6 years of age and fsg is seen mostly in the adolescents so here it is being given 12 year but if you look at the up to uc ratio is 0.16 so what we say up to uc if it is less than 0.2 this is normal if it is 0.2 to 2 this is nephritic range nephritic range proteinuria this is nephritic range proteinuria and if it is more than 2 this is nephrotic range proteinuria this is nephrotic range proteinuria so if we go basically like this right now this proteinuria is something which is 0.160 so this is not coming in the nephrotic range so this particularly choices are ruled out so what the answer is now left is benign orthostatic proteinuria mostly in the questions now you get confused so please follow the method of exclusion if three are excluded one is left right that is what we say benign orthostatic proteinuria two year old male boy has many hypopigmented macules of skin sebaceous adenomas of face 
fibromas in the perineal region and mental retardation so if you just start thinking what disorder we are talking of we are talking of the tuberous sclerosis tuberous sclerosis in the tuberous sclerosis there is basically hypopigmented macules which are called as the ash leaf macules which are called as the ash leaf macules there is facial angiofibroma or adenoma of the face and they are present in a butterfly like distribution there is presence of the periangual fibroma there is presence of periangual fibroma so whenever you are being given at something where structure is being affected structural protein is affected that is mostly autosomal dominant structure is affected for example osteogenesis imperfecta what is imperfect formation of the bone so structure is affected autosomal dominant achondroplasia a means absent plasia means growth absence of growth cartilage structure will be affected autosomal dominant so answer comes out to be here autosomal dominant is right tuberous sclerosis autosomal dominant there is a gene tsc1 gene chromosome number 9 and the protein here is hamartin then is tsc2 chromosome 16 and protein here is tuberin all these genes are affected but this basically is the autosomal dominant is 3 year old child has fever for 7 days not responding to antibiotics there is conjunctival congestion present edema and erythema of palms and soles a child having fever not responding to antibiotics red eyes with edema of palms and soles this is sufficient to make a diagnosis of the kawasaki disease this is sufficient to make a diagnosis of the kawasaki disease so in the particularly kawasaki disease what we say there is presence of fever that lasts for at least 5 days at least 5 days and that is not responding to antibiotics so here particularly what is being given is fever for 7 days not responding to antibiotics there is conjunctival congestion which is present there and this bilateral conjunctival congestion is non exudative so moment we say non exudative we are excluding the infection as a cause infection is not there is edema of the hands is erythema of palms and soles and there is presence of the strawberry tongue strawberry tongue now strawberry tongue can also be seen in scarlet fever but that will always respond to antibiotics here we are saying is it is not responding to the antibiotics so we are saying here this is this strawberry tongue right this can be seen clear so picture of kawasaki disease and kawasaki disease the problem you get is thrombocytosis thrombocytosis which is seen mainly in the sub acute stage and you are literally worried about the sub acute stage because one is thrombocytosis one you get is coronary artery aneurysm so it can particularly result in what uh, uh, chances of myocardial infarction so therefore this is sub acute stage which is worrisome polycythemia is not seen in fact anemia is seen and leukopenia is not seen in fact leukocytosis is seen clear so out of the choices being given what is there thrombocytosis that is a feature which you can get is moving on to the next question in a 2 year old child developmental assessment is done he will be able to do all of the following speak sentence of two words yes and the rule of thumb says rule of thumb says from 2 to 5 years of age 2 to 5 years of age child can speak sentence of words equal to the age of the child what we mean to say the child is 2 year can speak sentence of two words 3 year child can speak sentence of three words 4 year child can speak sentence of four words so this is true follow two step commands yes according to the milestone it is yes but practically no child follows the commands right but this is true participate in group play we mean to say cooperative play or group play that comes at the age of 4 years 
at two years what you get is the parallel play parallel play means you take the child outside to a park and the child if the other child are playing for bat he will ask for a bat he will play just like them but he will never join them just like the parallel line says right so this is not true at two years of age climb upstairs and downstairs yes at two years of age but that will be two feet per step or one step at a time the child is going up one feet another feet one feet another feet so out of the four which is not seen at 12 two year that is the participate in a group plays moving on to the next question two year old male had seizure after having fever for one day if his seizure is simple febrile seizure all of the following statements would be true except now the febrile seizures they are the most common seizures seen in children and the age group of febrile seizure is 6 to 60 months the age group of the febrile seizure is 6 to 60 months now if we consider simple febrile seizure one thing is they are always generalized so that is particularly true the duration is less than 15 minutes so this is not true this is not true there is no recurrence within 24 hours there is no recurrence within 24 hours if a child had a febrile seizure he will not have again the febrile seizure within the next 24 hours no recurrence within 24 hours no prophylaxis and eg and mri is not required no eg or mri is required right so out of the four choices the seizure usually lasts for 30 minutes no right this is not in the simple febrile seizure yes right moving on to the next one regarding breath holding spells all are two breath holding spells they just mimic like the absent seizure right but the absent seizure age group is 5 to 8 years and they usually start between 6 to 18 months of age they will be following after some anger frustration or scolding that is true but the important thing is there is no post ictal confusion just like no post ictal post ictal confusion is seen in the absent seizure the same is seen here so there is particularly no post ictal confusion which is seen here right so saying that short periods of drowsiness after spell this is not true at all and there can be rhythmic clonic jerking yes that can be there and the only treatment required here is the parents reassurance the only treatment required here is the parents reassurance right moving on to your last question that is the 15th one out of the following congenital heart disease prophylaxis for infective endocarditis is not required in. now why do you require prophylaxis for infective endocarditis there is some injured endocardium or there is some valvular damage then you are doing some surgery which will cause bacteremia this bacteremia will lead to infective endocarditis so whenever there is some injured endocardium before starting the treatment you before doing surgery you start the prophylaxis for infective endocarditis that is the thing now just consider a case of asd now in the case of asd atrial septal defect we expect that particularly blood will go like this from left atria to right atria but between the two atria there is no significant pressure difference so even if the blood is coming here that is not damaging the endocardium and if endocardium is not damaged prophylaxis is not required so what we basically say prophylaxis for infective endocarditis is not required in the ast prophylaxis for infective endocarditis is not required in the atrial septal defectus right so here in this fmg cbt solution i have tried to cover those topics which are frequently asked in the fmg exams i hope you all have done very well and you will perform very well so this is dr ashutosh agarwal saying you all all the best thank you